Okay. Um, so, um, I will be talking about man monitoring applications um, and evolving from text logs to um, extensive automatic monitoring. Uh, my name is Sven Finke. Um, I'm working at Shopware in Germany. Um, I'm the uh, one of the developers for Shopware Connect. Um, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, maybe. Um, one of my, or my mo main project is Shopware Connect. Um, I will be using this as an example because I'm mainly responsible for DevOps in this project and taking care of the servers, keeping them running. And if anything bad happens, I'm the person who uh, will be um, asked and um, I should at least um, give them some intel what exactly is happening right now. Um, yeah, so just a little bit about what Shopper Connect is. Connect is um, an application where suppliers and merchants, it's an e-commerce application where suppliers and merchants can connect to each other. Suppliers can supply products to the platform and merchants can subscribe to the products. Um, the order is then if, if somebody orders something in the merchant's shop, the order is directly submitted to the supplier. Um, for me, that means that I have to synchronize product data, including prices, descriptions, availability, everything, images. <laughs> um, I have to synchronize orders. I have to make sure that if an order is being placed, both supplier and merchant are on the same term, on equal terms on this order, so that the prices are right, availability is right, and um, everything is fine. Um, so the system really needs to run at all the time. Um, and if anything fails, that can become pretty bad. Um, one of the things we are using, and that is, oh, the images are cropped, damn. Um, one of the things we're using to um, make sure that we uh, are finishing all our tasks in time is Beanstalk. I'll be talking about this uh, throughout the application a few times because it's hard to analyze and find out what's going on if something crashes uh, with some Beanstalk jobs. Um, Beanstalk is a message queue for everyone who does not know that. Um, a message queue um, can be used to um, make tasks run um, asynchronously. So you put them into the message queue and some task handlers uh, pull them from the message queue. So they will be handled. Um, that way you don't have to wait for long running processes inside your request or if you start a command. You can just create the tasks, push them to the Beanstalk and the responsible handlers will take care of it. Um, yeah, in Connect we have seven individual components, indexer, updater, um, specialized components that take care of several things. We have four servers I have to manage. Um, two of them are in the live system behind the load balancer, so they should always be equal. Um, the other two are used for staging systems, staging one and staging two. The one is used for QA purposes. There is some stuff going on and often things break due to due, uh, testings um, and the demo environment, which can be used to um, show the stuff to customers potential customers. Um, I have running 22 cron jobs on each of these machines that I have to keep track of, which is also sometimes not that easy. Um, 33 workers that are managed through a, uh, through a super And um, in total we have currently 2,300 users roundabout and 690,000 products. Um, just to give you a little scale, um, and we produce around 30 gigabytes of log files each month. In case there goes something wrong, I have to dig, th dig through these log files, so that nah, might be a problem. Back on monitoring. Through these, we have a lot of data that I have to, to manage and um, so what is background monitoring? Background monitoring, um, Monitoring is um, a term used to say that I want to find out what's currently going on. Monitor, show me the status of, of my current processes or whatever is, is used, um, and managing it. Um, with background, I mean that I want to tra keep track of all the, th uh, all the stuff that is going on yeah, in the background that I don't have um, track of uh, through any UI or anything. I don't have a web interface to call uh, my, my cron jobs to see what are my cron jobs doing. 
Um, so any kind of process, daemon, worker, whatever you may call it. Anything that runs in background and is fired automatically, I want to track that. But how is it working right now without some, some monitoring? You probably get feedback because you don't have any, any measurement to, to um, fix something before a real crash happens. You will get feedback probably from the customer. So yeah, you get a message. The sync is not working right now. Hmm, bad. Um, maybe you, there's just some data wrong for the customers who, so you can uh, look into the da database and hopefully fix this very fast. Maybe some products are not updated. Um, also th something you hopefully can fix very fast without um, uh, having too many issues. Or maybe the site is down. This will create chaos. <laughs> this is not a good, good thing to happen. You don't want your site to be down. Um, and in case something like that happens, you need to fix it. Mm, and to fix it, yeah, you probably need to gather some intel. This is a little screenshot of the log files we have for Connect. These are by far not all of the log files, and you see that there are some filtered away by log rotate. So um, these are old files from the last days. This is a current file. If there's something happening, I need to dig through these files. Um, if it happens right now, that might be easy. Just open the latest log file and tail it and um, try to cause the error again, and you may find the exception. If something happened at Friday afternoon and you're looking at that on Monday, you probably have to go a few files backwards. Uh, depending on how many logs you generate, uh, maybe you just have to look at the uh, log two, or uh, maybe you even um, rotate them more often. Um, that depends. Um, if the exception happens just in, your, in one component, that might also be quite easy. Just open the log file and everything is fine. You'll get a big problem if um, an exception is not occurring just in one simple component, but in several ones. So it spreads throughout your application. Then you might have to open two or three log files um, to really see what is happening, what caused my problems, and how can I fix them. Um, if that's a few days ago, um, you have to find that exact time uh, in the log files, and that might be a pretty horrible task. Um, so, but what's the problem? Um, the errors already exist. If you get feedback from someone that something's crashed, um, yeah, it already crashed. So, um, yeah, that's bad. The error already persists. So, if the synchronization is not working, it was not once not working, it's not working right now. And um, that's not good. Customers, rec customers recognize errors, so they lose trust in your application. Um, if this happens more than once, um, they will become, probably become pretty angry. Um, and if they have to tell you that something is wrong, um, then they, don't have, they can't have trust that you uh, can fix anything beforehand, that you have control over your application. Um, Finding stuff is hard, like I just mentioned with the log files, and time. Like I said, the errors persist. If you have an error that is not easy to fix, it may take a whole day or longer um, to, to fix the issue. And that whole day, the customer can't really work, depending on the error that happened. Or your site is down for, for about half a day or a day. That's not good. Yeah, monitoring to the rescue. Um, I will talk about three different components. Um, log aggregators, metrics uh, ag aggregators, and performance analysis. These are the three components we're using Connect, and these are three components that really <laughs> saved me a few times when something was going wrong um, on, or made me realize that something can go wrong in the next days. So the first thing, log aggregators. What exactly is a log aggregator? Um, or more, more precisely, what does a log aggregator? First thing, it gathers logs. So all the log files we've seen um, in the past will be gathered by the log aggregator and uh, centralized. It will index log files. Um, this gives me the ability to search them. It will add a search, um, a full text search for all the log files, um, and it will add a chronology for me. So I can jump to the Friday afternoon and see all everything that's happening there. I can filter that log files for that exact time and see what happened, what caused my problems. 
I can group stuff by environment. Like I mentioned earlier, our life system is made up of two servers. That means if I have to find something, I would have to jump to each server and look at the log files and find out is it just happening on one server or on both or anything. The log aggregator um, groups stuff by environment, so I just look at the production environment, at the live environment, and I will see uh, is this happening just on one server um, or on both servers, what's going on. Um, and something that's maybe more subtle, I can make logs available to more people. I don't want to give everyone access to my servers. I don't want to give the trainee access to, um, with SSH to my servers to look at log files. Um, maybe by accident he breaks something um, on the live system, not a good idea. So um, with the log aggregator, it's, a, um, it's basically a website where I can visit um, and I can grant more people access to the service. I can also grant access to the log files to people who are not familiar with the terminal, who wouldn't even know how to, to open the log files on the service. Another cool thing, I can add alerts and messages. But uh, let's look at the log aggregator. All oh, the quality is great. Um, this is the, this is the um, overview of our production environment. You'll see a lot of log files, and here's something I had to, to jump into and fix it because we have a critical error here. Um, but I can immediately see that. Um, we have two, okay, it's not visible. We have two different environments. Um, some of the messages come from the backend one, and some of the messages come from the backend two. But we see them in the one big overview. Um, I can filter the, filter the messages down below, and um, here I can, could select production, uh, the environment I want to use all the time. By the way, this is um, a tool called uh, Paper Trails I'm using. Um, there are plenty of other tools out there that can be used, um, also open source tools. This one is, um, is a paid tool, a paid service, um, which has the advantage that I don't have to set up my own log aggregator service or anything. But yeah, just look for that and um, you fill, will find different solutions. Um, here I can see that um, I am displaying two different log files. In fact, there are a lot of other log files in here, but not currently visible. Um, I can also filter them out, so I just see the log files of a specific file or um, a specific environment or just one specific server. Um, so I have uh, plenty of stuff I can do there. Alerts, I have um, quickly mentioned that earlier. Um, I can define alerts. Um, we just have uh, basically two different, different alerts. They are duplicated, so we will receive a message in HipChat if something is going wrong, if one of these alerts triggers, and I will receive a mail about the, the issue. So that even on the weekend, um, if something really critical happens, I will get a mail and uh, maybe I can uh, try to fix that or um, say, no, I can wait till, till Monday. Mm, this is how an um, alert can be configured. You can basically um, write a query and um, just what you've seen down in the search field, you can just copy that and paste it there. You can uh, limit this to a specific log file or anything. Um, typically, you can define a frequency. So if something's going wrong, I want to be informed in this case every hour about this error. Um, and you can define a threshold. And sometimes um, if the filter is getting like five messages per hour, that's fine, it's okay. Um, things can go wrong, that might be okay. But if you suddenly receive 60 or 70 of these messages, something may, might be wrong. So um, yeah, you can define that. Some other things, here are some, some definitions for our hip chat. Um, yeah, that's how you can define an alert. Of course, this is a bit different from tool to tool, but basically this is, um, this is how things can be set up. But how can you define this? How do you set up um, such, a, such a log aggregator? It's quite simple. Um, for Unix or um, Linux system logs, you just have to do these three steps. Um, you just have to detect your system log of, uh, at first. Um, there are different ones out there, so yeah. Um, then you have to change something in your syslog uh, and gconf file. I add a few lines there and um, yeah, that's, oh, can I, can I scroll there? 
It's not everything. Yeah, I guess cool. Ah, the third step was hidden. Um, and then the third step, you are going to um, kill the service, the, the old service, and uh, make it um, accept the, the change. Um, that's how we do it for system logs. But in my case, I don't only want to, to use system logs. I have my own custom log files I want to, um, to log. Um, most of the system files don't really, really um, interest me at all. But there's also a solution for that. I can uh, push any, any existing logs to that. Um, here is remote syslog. That's a tool, for, um, I think, provided by Paper Trails. Um, I just download that one. Um, install it, and then they provide a configuration file. Um, this is the standard setup for the paper trail. Um, I can define um, different log files here. Um, in, in fact, our definition is a bit longer. Um, and I can set up the destination. Um, not only for paper trail, this also works for other tools. Um, yeah. After I've done that, I just start the daemon from for remote syslog, and the log files are being pushed to paper trails. Um, yeah, so the setup is really quite easy. We've automated this with Ansible, and it are just um, three commands, and um, you're good to go. Very simple. Uh, this is also not uh, only limited to PHP, obviously. Um, you haven't seen any, any line of PHP code here yet. Um, this can be done for, for anything you're running on, the, on your machine. Um, yeah. The second part, the metrics aggregator. What is a metrics aggregator? Um, guessing by the name, it's pretty much similar to the log aggregator. Um, just, it just uses metrics. But what is a metric? Metrics are basically just numbers, but in a context. Um, you can see here, this is a quick overview of our metrics. Uh, this tool is called Librato. Same here, there are lots of tools out there, depending on what you currently have and what, are your, what your um, needs are. Pick the right tool for you. Um, in this case, we have um, some uh, metrics here. Um, we have, uh, up here you can see we have uh, 164 metrics um, pushed to, to the service. Um, and the met metric is really just a number. So you can see here we have both environments, backend one and backend two. And um, every peak or every point where this line changes is a number that has been pushed um, to the service. Um, we define a name for this um, that tells us how, what kind of data this is. Um, these are really just integer values, float values, depending on the context. Um, and without knowing what they are, um, it wouldn't be very helpful. With this data, you can create dashboards like this. Um, this. This gives me some information about the current status of the application. In fact, this dashboard, I have that on a TV screen on the opposite side of my desk, so I'll always see this one, and if something goes wrong, I can clearly see that. Um, a little example. You can't see that example, damn. Mm. Okay, this is a view of the past four weeks. Um, down in the left, you have the Beanstalk uh, jobs um, that are currently in the, in the queue. Um, and it should look like this. You should have these peaks and everything is fine. Um, jobs are being pushed to the queue, they are handled, and everything is good. Um, what you don't see here, um, we have, I had a very high peak um, to the left here, uh, so you basically can't see the, the, these, these peaks from before. Um, there I had f uh, around 40,000 jobs in the Beanstalk queue. Um, it was not that bad it, um, because yeah, nothing was really broken, uh, broken. The memory was not um, super full. No processes has been killed. So without monitoring, I wouldn't really have noticed that something's going wrong. But the queue was filling up more and more. If it, this would have gone, um, yeah, going on, was going on, um, after one or, one or two days, um, the memory would have been full and I would have had a real problem. The issue for that was simply that the jobs couldn't be handled as fast as they are being pushed to the queue. Um, if I wouldn't have reacted to that and seen that in the, in the right time, 
process may have been killed or anything else um, bad would have happened. And um, yeah, that way with uh, the dashboard, I have seen that and I can um, react to it and fix the issue before any, anyone notices. In this case, we also can define alerts. Um, so this is a definition for this. Um, as we only have numbers, um, you can just select the metric you want, so the, the context of the number um, and uh, what the trigger is. So in this case, if the average is above uh, 50,000 for uh, 30 minutes, then um, there's something wrong and uh, the alert will be thrown. In this case, this is uh, the indexer, so the component that takes, uh, that takes track of um, our products being indexed to an Elasticsearch database. Um, and yeah, how is this being done? Um, it's even more simple than uh, the other one. It's just one curl. Um, I have my, my uh, user data up there. Um, and I just give some, some data. So I have the name for my metric. I can define some tags. In our case, we have defined what environment we have. So that's the backend one or backend two or whatever. Um, and I just have the name of the metric and the value. This is just a curl I fire in the PHP code. Um, we have written a wrapper for this so that I just have to pass um, the name and the value into the function. And uh, you can call this at any time in your code um, to, to push the values. In fact, we have written one um, command in Symfony that collects lots of metrics like um, the current amount of users and um, products and stuff like that and pushes that to, um, to Librato. Yeah, so far so good. Um, the last component, performance analysis. This is not only useful for um, yeah, making your, your application run fast. Um, yeah, why performance analysis? This is not only useful for, for making your application um, run faster if you realize that it's quite slow. Um, you can also recognize irregular changes. So you haven't done a um, deployment or anything changed and suddenly your response time of the live environment um, goes up. Then there's something wrong. Um, that might be a bottleneck. Um, but you won't realize it at the beginning. Um, I'll come back to that later. Um, and you're able to gather some intel. So um, if there's something going wrong, if there's some regular changes, uh, you can easily identify which um, exact function call causes the trouble. Or if it is a slow SQL statement, or if you have um, very much data in one response or anything. Um, yeah, so this is an overview of typeways. Uh, again, this is not shown completely. Um, we have uh, two um, environments um, located here. Um, this dashboard can be used to, to see what changed in this application over the last time. So I can see, hey, the response time dropped by 33%. Um, this is okay for me. Um, if it would have dropped far further or if there, um, it never really fluctuates in that area and it drops really to an amount that is not normal to your application, then you also should worry. So not only um, if, you, if the response time increases, also a sudden decrease of the re response time could be bad. Um, so this gives you a good insight what happened. Um, also some requests per minute and um, yeah, some other data. But how does this look in detail? This is the overview of um, our social network. So the main front end the customers use. Um, we have an average response time of 100 milliseconds here and we can see that there is some um, peak in um, the requests for the site and uh, yeah, how the site reacts to the stuff. But we can also see down here um, how fast some um, requests are. Um, like um, some of them use uh, just 80 milliseconds and we have one here that's a bit um, higher. It's around 1.3 seconds. Um, maybe we should take care of that. Um, what's currently not visible on the um, right side to the memory, there is um, also a row which indicates the impact of that request. 
um, because even if the one action um, is um, needing 1.3 seconds or anything, if it's just called once a day, um, it might be okay. It really depends on the situation. Um, in fact, the, it's, they are ordered uh, by impact, so the um, top response time, the 80 milliseconds, has the far most impact on the result uh, from all these other results. The, the other ones are just around 5% or something. So, um, yeah. But let's look at the start action, because that's quite high. We can also get a bigger an overview of the last calls and um, how things change. And here we can also see that some of the calls just need um, few time, uh, very, very low time. So 500, now, okay, very low is, uh, is a lie, but uh, 500 milliseconds. And sometimes the database call takes um, over two seconds. Um, so yeah, you can investigate further. You can also see here um, with these uh, labels, um, they indicate slow queries, um, not so slow, uh, sometimes not so slow that they will be um, recognized by your hardware monitoring or anything, uh, or your hoster. Um, but they are regularly slow for your, for your application, so you can handle them. Um, you also get, can get stack traces and um, more information if you need that. Um, but this is really a good tool to give you an overview if something changes, because um, a change from 100 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds um, is an increase of 200%, of, um, but you won't recognize that. Nobody will recognize a re response time change from 100 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds. Um, but this tool will show you. Now, this being done, uh, we're using Tideways here, and um, you can simply install um, a PHP extension on your system and a daemon. Um, in most cases, you don't have to add the extension to the PHP any, um, but what you can also do is um, tell Tideways which framework it uses, uh, you are using in your application. So um, in our case, instead of WordPress, we have Symfony 2 in there. So um, Tideways can guess a bit better what's happening in your application. Um, if it knows what, what framework you're using. Um, yeah, so we have these three tools. They give you a good, in, a good insight and you can use them all together. So yeah, hooray, awesome. Um, but is this really all necessary? Do you need all these three tools to, um, to uh, handle that stuff? Um, yes, I uh, have uh, taken some of the issues we had in the past and uh, one of them I've already talked about was the Beanstalk queue being uh, running full. That's one of the issues I would have never recognized without the background monitoring. This way I could uh, solve it um, without it becoming very bad. The response time increase. We actually had a case where the response time increased to 300 milliseconds. Um, and we've just realized it through the uh, performance monitor. Um, the cause of this was a bottleneck, um, a bottleneck that was not really bad right now, but if we would have suddenly had um, a few more customers that uh, would have uploaded um, several 10,000 products, um, it would have gone bad. Um, this way I could fix it before the response time goes up to one, two or three seconds or any um, task run into timeouts or anything, um, and this was a good thing. Um, without this monitoring, I would have never realized that. Supervisor tasks being killed. One of the um, things in the overview uh, of the metrics monitor actually was how many of my supervisor tasks are currently running. If one of them fails, um, it was killed due to some reason, um, I probably won't notice that, um, depending on what, what kind of service it is. And uh, yeah, maybe the synchronization for a customer doesn't work anymore. Um, because of the metrics, I will see if a task is killed. I will see if a supervisor task is killed. So the supervisor task where all the workers running in the background, they are doing stuff like um, synchronizing, uh, fetching updates for products, um, starting index, uh, the, the indexing process, and anything like that. Um, and something else, uh, specific tasks crash due to some exceptions. 
Um, the exceptions, I can pretty easily see them in the paper trail. Um, if there are currently um, exceptions being thrown, um, I will clearly see that due to the um, stack trace that will be visible in, in uh, paper trail, at least in our case. Um, and they are clearly distinguishable to um, other log entries. Um, so they are easy to detect. Um, we also had this a few times. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's it so far. Um, from cases we had where really we needed all these tools and they, every, one, every single tool helped me a lot. Um, but now to every single one of them. We have the logs. Um, the logs are very useful for complex applications with many components. If you have a more simple application that has just one component and you just have one big log file where everything runs into, then you probably don't need a log aggregator. Also, if you don't have multiple servers in one environment, um, it's also probably not, not necessary to use a log aggregator. Um, Another thing where a log, log aggregator is useful is many people benefit from the access to the logs. So if you have a Q&A team or um, a support team um, that would benefit from being able to read the logs, if, they, if the customer um, comes toward them and says that, yeah, the shop synchronization is not working, that he can't log in anymore, then it might be useful for the, for the support to be able to open the log files and see if something with the customer is wrong. Um, and sometimes log files are, uh, are located on remote machines you can't quickly access. This is not a problem we, we uh, generally have in, in uh, web development, um, but I had this in the past that I would have to, to call somebody to give me access to a remote machine because it was on an internal network. Um, and that can be a pain in the ass if you just have to wait for them to react to you if there's a serious issue right now. Um, yeah, that could also be solved by this log aggregator if he is pushing the messages. Of course, if it's an internal network and the machine does not have direct internet access, you have to think of, think of solutions how to make the access through the log aggregator possible. But um, yeah, that might also be a case where a log aggregator is useful. Metrics. Uh, when are they useful? Yeah. First and foremost, do you have data that can be tracked? If you have no data that can, could be tracked with metrics, um, you probably can't use them. If there are a lot of stuff in the background, um, even if you don't have that clear numbers, um, you might be able to create some numbers by just, we have things like for the, um, for the beanstalk, if the task is pushed to the beanstalk, we um, increase the counter. And um, if it's finished with a success, we increase a different counter so we can clearly see how many tasks have been pushed to Beanstalk and how many have succeeded and how many should be still in there um, or failed maybe or something like that. But to do that, you need clear workflows. Without clear workflows, clearly defined workflows, this is not possible. You don't always have them. In most cases, you will have some starting point, some endpoint, and you're good to go, <laughs> but um, you will not always have these clearly defined workflows. And one other thing for the metrics sales department, sometimes they just want some numbers. They like fancy dashboards. But if you have no clear workflows or anything, um, if they can't see any numbers there, uh, it's pretty useless for them too. Um, yeah, and now the last component again, um, the performance analysis. Um, you will probably need it if, or make you can use of it if you have complex tasks that use a lot of performance or are potential to use a lot of performance. Um, one of the things in development for, for detecting bottlenecks is pretty hard, a bit hard because um, we are working on machines that don't have that much load on them like, like the life service finally have. You could simulate that, of course, but in many cases that simulation is not close to reality or... Um, yeah, but if you have complex tasks that potentially consume a lot of performance on the live server, um, performance analysis and monitoring might be a good idea. Also, is your application likely to run into bottlenecks? This is a bit hard to determine beforehand, but um, if you guess there are a few functions that might be a bottleneck in the future, so if there is a sudden increase of products or any other data in your application, um, and they all need to be processed, it might be a good idea to use these, this monitoring just to 
find bottlenecks before they become bad. Um, and of course, is your performance already bad? If you already have a slow, uh, slow application, it might be a good idea to use performance analysis to get rid of these, um, these slow parts of your application, fix them, um, and then keep this afterwards to identify other areas that, of the application that are becoming slower over time. Um, yeah, that's so far from me for the, for the talk. Um, any questions? Yes. Show the dashboard. The dashboard that was Librato. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you for the presentation. Uh, quick, quick, quick question. So um, you mentioned that you use Beanstalk, pay for trade, and Tideways. Yes. Three solutions for three different kind of things and components of your package analysis and presentation. But have you considered using different uh, other? solutions like Ibana, for example, to display this thing, so lock stash, because it's kind of a, it's, it's a full stack kind of a solution for mm -hmm. plastic. Yep. Have you considered using that one? Um, so the question was, if um, I have considered using things like Kibana or Logstash, um, things that might um, group some functionality for my application instead of using all these different components. Um, yes, I've considered that. I'm already, uh, right now I'm looking into um, finding um, more um, centralized solutions for this. Um, but even if it's centralized, these uh, three components remain. So we have, um, even if uh, metrics and uh, log aggregation is put together into one, one application, um, I still have the benefit of separate, I, I still have the log aggregation and the metrics um, that I can use separately in some cases. Uh, we're currently not using uh, things like um, Logstash um, because all these tools we have shown here are, um, um, projects hosted somewhere, I don't have to take care of any servers, I don't have to take care of, um, of another server that needs to be running. As far as I know right now, Logstash is, uh, is a server tool I have to set up by myself. Well, they're provided as a service. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, but that's one of the reasons uh, why we are using this right now, these tools right now, because they are hosted solutions and uh, yeah. This has been set up quite a few years ago, so um, I'm not sure if Logstash there already provided the hosted solution, um, and I was not involved into the picking these exact tools. But uh, yeah, I'm currently also searching for some um, more combined tools. Yeah. Um, do you have uh, some uh, blocking or performance issue uh, related to sending data? Because uh, where I work, we use also data. Uh, but we send it to the and then it from the net. So we don't block our process by sending to some other service. I'm wondering if you have some issues with that or else. Um, no, this is um, just like, yeah, fire and forget. We just fire that to the, the service. Um, we don't really care about the response of that thing. Um, if it potentially the service is unavailable, we don't really care. Um, and it doesn't really affect our performance. Yeah. I forgot to repeat the question, I think. <laughs> the question was if, if the uh, metrics aggregation, if uh, when we are um, collecting this, this data, if that affects the performance of the application um, in any way. And it doesn't for us. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah.